Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB foundation level sample paper discussions. We are in chapter one talking about the set A and today we shall be looking forward to continue with some more questions from the chapter one itself and talking about the best tips and tricks related to these questions to help you succeed in your examinations in your very first attempt. To get started with the very first question for the day is question number four and here we are talking about you work in a team that develops a mobile application for food ordering. In the current iteration, the team decided to implement the payment functionality. Which of the following activity is a part of the test analysis? I think the very first thing what we should always think when this examination is concerned that when the context is provided to you, you should always try to recall that what do you remember from this particular topic in the examination, right? Many people tend to start reading the options, which is not the right approach because options can be sometimes very tricky. And this is a perfect example of that which will help you to understand in a moment. But having been recalled with what you remember would give you a little bit of more confidence than that of without recalling and directly going to options. Because of course, what you remember would be something what you have read in the syllabus. And at the same time, having your answers handy with you would will be, will be giving you a very clear picture that where exactly not to get diverted and where exactly to concentrate on to come up with the right conclusion. Because picking up an answer may not be a big deal, but picking up the right answer is very big deal. So let's exactly understand in this question, of course, the very first thing is that they just gave you a diversion very smartly that you are working on a mobile application for food ordering. Now you have to don't, you know, you really don't have to think about anything particular to what is food ordering has to do with this because the context is on the test analysis and they've not provided anything beyond it. And the second thing they also highlighted to you here is the payment functionality. Now payment functionality is again a diversion because they start think, you know, making you think about what happens during payment options, what are the gateways involved, system integration and so on and so forth. Okay. The question is very straightforward. What do you expect to do during test analysis? And there are straightforward activities there that you talk about analyzing the test conditions, uh, sorry, analyzing the test bases, uh, picking up the test conditions from there, that is defining the test conditions, and also look forward to find anomalies when it comes to the test basis review. So as you analyze, you would have questions related to it and you would tend to certainly uh, report them in form of defects, which is a part of the static testing or early testing of the test basis. So I think with given this recollation, then you look at the options, you would have more confidence to conclude that what exactly you're supposed to do. In this new syllabus 4.0, the examination have been made a little more trickier with their options. So sometimes the options will not be very straightforward to allow you to pick the right answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and quickly see the options here. The very first option, option A says, estimating that testing the integration with the payment service will take 8% days. Remember, as a part of the test analysis phase, you do not do estimation. It's nowhere written in the syllabus. So sticking to the syllabus is equally important and going through that is very much important. So test planning is the phase where we look forward to estimate the amount of work, or even if you connect this to Agile, you call that phase as sprint planning, where you do the estimations of the stories, not analysis, right? So A is certainly not the answer. If I talk about B, deciding that the team should test if it is possible to properly share payment between many users. Now payment between many users, why would I share it with everyone else when I'm the tester of it? But let me tell you a trick around. But before that, I want to share something important than you know this one. So let's let's go ahead and check it out. So option C says using boundary value analysis. Hold on, at this point of time, you should be understanding when it comes to technique. Isn't that we use it for test design phase? Like test design is a phase where you start writing test cases and picking up the desired techniques to apply them to reduce your test cases. So at this point itself, you should keep recalling and then you know connect the dots that this is not the place where you start writing the test cases. This is still the test analysis phase and you know it's not the technique time. So BVA to derive the test data for the test cases that check the correct payment processing for the minimum allowed amount to be paid. So even if I read the full option, 
that does not make any difference but just to remind you that techniques are used when it is in test design phase not in the test analysis phase and look at the option d option d says analyzing the discrepancies between the actual result and expected result after executing a test case that checks the process of the payment with a credit card and reporting a defect now that makes it very clear that we are talking about the test execution because after reporting a defect after execution uh, which means that after executing a test then you have reported a defect then you are analyzing the re reason for the discrepancy which is the root cause analysis indirectly so if you remember in my tutorial also in this 1.4 we told you that uh, there is an indirect statement which says that root cause, root cause analysis takes place as a part of the test execution phase itself and that is where it just completes the understanding that d is also not a part of the test analysis however if i now compile all the four options i know that i'm only left with option b but if you look at option b you would never think of picking up that as the right answer but if you start eliminating and if you have very clear understanding of the concepts you would be able to understand that yes that should be the b as the right answer so let's quickly check it out the deciding that the team should test if it is possible to properly share payment between many users simply means that the workload can be divided among the people by identifying different test conditions as a part of test analysis we look forward to identify different uh, options uh, like different parts of the test conditions and as we identify different conditions, we can look forward to distribute the load among the different people. And when you say agile team, we look forward to work together, right? So that's how it makes sense and picks it up as the right answer. So the right answer here is B, deciding that the team should test if it is possible to properly share payment between many users. So let's look at the next question here. And the next question here is talking about Question number five, which of the following factors from first to fifth have significant influence on the test process? Includes five major factors, the SDLC, the number of defects detected in the previous projects, the identified product risks, new regulatory requirements forcing formal white box testing, and the test environment setup. So in all these options, I think we're there's nothing to do with the options here like given options for the right answer you just have to start eliminating each of these uh, pointers given to you that how exactly these factors influence the test process i think to keep it very simple when it comes to the sdlc sdlc has a direct impact on the test process with respect to the amount of work to be done with respect to the amount of automation being done in terms of level being conducted where we put a lot of effort uh, you know, like unit testing is more than the system testing. So all that makes sense. So SDLC is a direct influencer to your test process. If we talk about the second one, the number of defects detected in the previous project. Now that looks a little odd because number of defects found in the previous project could be a good example for deriving efficient and effective test cases, but does not really influence your test process. It could be a good basis to understand uh, where to test more, what kind of test cases to write. So it can improve your skills of writing test, test cases or skills of improving productivity, but not influencing the test activities and test process in terms of executing the process directly. So B can, or like second option can be ruled out. Let's go to the next one. And third option says the identified product risk. You don't need me to tell you that the product risk are direct influencers of the test process. We look forward to shift left things. We try to prioritize our test cases. We do a proportionate amount of testing. So of course, every single part of the testing will be impacted directly by the product risk, which are identified. And product risks are mitigated by performing the required test. But as the fourth element, the new regulatory requirement forcing formal white box testing is another one. Of course, uh, if you remember from the objective of testing, we clearly said that testing is not only to fulfill the formal or functional requirements, we do talk about the non-functional requirements along with standards, regulatories, compliances, as some of the products would have them as one of the key requirements specified. So it is very crucial and important for the organizations to take that into account as well. But if you talk about the last one, the test environment setup, now this is just an activity of the process, but does not influence the overall process. So like for example, executing a test is an activity 
Designing test cases is an activity. Using a technique is an activity, but that does not change the process by any means. So creating an environment is also an activity. Now compiling all these, all these points together, if you look at the right answer here, the right answer here is B, that is one, three, four, have significant influence on the overall test process, but not the other two. That is, we don't have to worry about the past data, and at the same time, we don't have to worry about the uh, environment setup. So that's how it makes it to the clear answer. Let's look at the next question, and next question right here is question number six. So the question number six is talking about which two of the following tasks belong mainly to a testing role. Again, this is very crucial and important to understand that, as I told you, some of the questions in the foundation level also will now have five options and you will be asked to select two. So you have to be carefully watching your responses and number of options given to you. In this case, both the options should be right in order to be 100% correct. So that is where when you see more than four options, make sure that you select the two right answers. And in this case, both the answers have to be right in order to get the full marks. That is one mark. Okay, so let's see the question carefully once again. So which two of the following tasks belong mainly to the testing role? Of course, configuring the test environment looks like, yes, of course, we are the people who are responsible to do that job. The second one is maintain the product backlog. You should recall from the Agile fundamentals and discussions what we had. PO is product owner who is responsible to maintain the product backlog uh, by in terms of interacting with the business representative and trying to you know, create the new set of stories for the team. However, we told you that it is a collaborative user story, but in, when it comes to maintaining the product backlog items, it's a responsibility of the PO, right? Let's look at the next one. C says design solutions to new requirement, design solutions to new requirement. It's again, an architect or a developer would be responsible to do that. Designing, if you take into account is architect for sure. But if you talk about implementing solutions, that would be developer. So go by the keywords, designing is architect, implementing is developer. So even that is not there. And the next one is create the test plan. Don't forget, we differentiated between two standard roles. We said you that you have one test management role and another one is testing role. So testing role means test engineers and as per the syllabus, as per the real protocols as well. Tester is not someone who is responsible for creating the plan. It's the test manager, so it does not go to the testing role as specific. Don't take it because the keywords are sometimes going to be a little tricky that it may drive you towards that white testers. Oh, testing is all about everything, right? So don't go by that keyword, testing role. Thinking, thinking of like test management role and testing role means tester role, right? So testers do not create the plan. It's a test management role which creates the plan. And the last one here is analyze the test basis. Of course, the test analysis is our key responsibility where we analyze the test basis and look forward to identify the test conditions. And these are our direct activities which we perform in the test process. So I think that makes it pretty clear. The right answer here is A, configure test environments and E, analyze the test basis, which makes it pretty clear that how exactly you remember about your test process and the activities and those distributed among the test management and the testing role. I think that's all from this particular video team, but each video will tell you something unique about the examination and their tips, tricks for doing the exam better. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.